Matthew chapter 5, and we will read verse 28. So I've been receiving a lot of emails and comments about people struggling with certain sins. So I want to give you some verses that will extremely help you. Now, these are verses that you've memorized, church, actually. So I don't know how much you memorized, but these would have been really helpful to you. I don't know if we might go through it again, but these are really excellent verses I've, I've learned that helps, that helps me in my life. And if you guys are struggling with something, I'm sure that when I show you these verses and explain, that I'm sure you're going to find out, oh, that's the reason why. I, you know what? He's right about that. So let's point out the problems. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28. It always starts with seeing something. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So notice right here what causes lust. And remember James 1? Sin begins through lust. But then you'll notice that lust here begins through seeing something. You got to realize sin always starts by sight. That's why it's easy for people to become worldly. Why? Because you see something on TV that appeals your flesh. You hear something in your ear that appeals your flesh. You look at how some people are dressed and that appeals your flesh. You look at the people's faces of fake joy on the drinking places, the dance bars, and especially television, all of that fake stuff. And then because you see that, you think that's where the joy lies. See, that's why people fall into worldly pleasures, drugs, and certain sinful addictions. It starts by what you see. You think it's cool. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. It always starts with something you see, and thus it also goes right here. These are the beginning stages of temptation and sin. So you've got to watch out what you see. But that's hard, right? You can't help it. Everything's around you. So that's why it's very important to try to avoid certain places or some of you should throw away your television and your internet, etc. Well, if you throw away the internet, you can't watch us, but whatever, you know. Hey, if it makes you avoid sin, I'll be happy, okay? Amen. Point is, is that you got to, these are the beginning stages. It's sight, and because of what you see, it enters your mind, doesn't it? So the mind is wicked. That's why you have to cast off vain imaginations. Imaginations are why you sin. You wouldn't be smoking that cigarette unless you were pondering and thinking about it first. So what's important is that you got to cast down those imaginations. That's how you get the victory over certain addictions, is that you don't even think about it first. So in Corinthians 10 verse 5, another verse said, you all should have memorized, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, bringing into captivity what? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what obeys Christ, you got to captivate your mind on. Now look at Proverbs 7. Here's another good verse that we've all memorized. And Brother Tom, I believe, he quoted one of these passages. Proverbs chapter 7, and then we're, you're going to look at verses 13 all the way through 21. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing right here for time's sake, but let's go through the stages in these verses. Now, as I explain these verses, I want you to quickly look through it. That way you don't get lost, all right? So I'm not going to be reading them, so you're going to have to read it for me to yourself. Verses 13 through 18, uh, Excuse me, we should actually start with verse 8. So I'm going to put verse 8 right here as well. If you look at verse 8 at the beginning, you'll notice sin starts when we go near its presence first. You see that, verse 8? You pass by, and this one is represented as a sexual prostitute right here. So it starts by passing by her place. So the reason why you'll see more people tending to... tend more prone to sin, let's say in San Francisco compared to like a conservative area, is because you're at the area, the presence, see? So verse 8, you go near its presence first. Then what happens is, verse 13 through 18, you'll notice that the sexual sin starts to tempt him, grabs him, and puts words in your ear, right? You felt like that when you were struggling with a certain sexual sin? 
not just sexual, any sin. Let's also look at verses 19 through 21. Then what happens is it tries to make you dismiss the thought of getting caught or getting punished for your sins. If you look at verse 19 through 21. Look at that, verse 19 through 21, the good man is gone. See, God's not going to get you. Don't think about that right now. Verse 19 through 21, the goodness of the house is gone. Don't worry, no one knows who you are. No one's watching you. you got, see, you're prone to do more sin when you have more freedom, especially isolation. That's the most dangerous place you could be in. See, more freedom. Ooh, getting quiet in here. Am I hitting something? This is just a teaching, amen? All right. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. Look at 2 Timothy 2.22. So you'll notice right here that at Proverbs chapter 7, it gives the perfect stages of temptation and sin, right? You notice that? So what does it do? Going near the presence. So we see that in the beginning stages right here. Another one is going near the presence. And you got to realize this, when it goes near the presence, then what will this place do once you're in this place of sin? And don't deny it. You know it did with you. What it does that it starts to tempt in your ear, then it allures you. Uh, we'll just put that as temptation. So it allures you, it tempts you, and then it also dismisses the thought of punishment, of the consequences. Now we're going to look at 2 Timothy 2.22. All right, what does that verse say? You should go to youthful lusts? No, it says you should flee. In 2 Timothy 2.22, it says, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the name, uh, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So the thing is this, is that a lot, you know what your problem is? Your problem is, is that one of the solutions is to throw the sin away. Now, Brother Chuck, what did he do with his contemporary music garbage? Some of you who've been to our church for a long time, I don't know if you know this, but he took his music and he disposed it. He threw it away. You know why? Because if you keep that sin on your shelf like some of you are doing right now, uh huh, you may have repented it, but you still kept that blasted sinful thing in your house, you better throw that thing away. You know what the people did at the Book of Acts? They burned them, actually. That way you don't get chances of getting it back. So here's a solution. What you got to do is throw the sin away. Do whatever it takes to flee from it. Don't go near a bar if you have a drinking problem. Come on. Don't go near that blasted screen if you know that what's, once you see something, it's going to make you do something else wrong. See? Flee from it. Now the thing is, is that here now we see the solution. Let's also turn to second, uh, 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. How many of you know that verse? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Amen. So what does that verse say? That verse, so God provides a way of escape. So here's the thing. There is an escape route. But you know what your problem is? You don't take it. Oh, there's no way I can conquer this sin. No, stop lying. All right, some of you got to stop lying and be brutally honest with yourself and seriously ponder, weren't there means like there were people over there or a church to go to or weren't there some, uh, wasn't there like a group over there that we can help each other or something like that? Wasn't I recommended that, but I was too proud to take it? See, that's your problem. If there's an escape route, take it if I were you. You know, people are ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Just take it. Not only that, if it's too painful, oh, but that's too painful. You're telling me to take this much time out of my schedule to do this. Look, see, that's your problem. When God provided you escape route and you made excuses, boom, then you lost your escape route. Oh, is there a way to conquer it? You know what your problem is? You want a convenient escape route when you say that. That's, good. that's your problem. What does the Bible say? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make, 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 make a way to escape. So that, what? That ye may be able to bear it. Let's also go to Psalms 119. Psalms chapter 119. And we're going to look at verse 11. 
Here's another thing. Remember, you got to cast down imaginations, right? But how are you going to cast down imaginations when thoughts keep popping in your mind? That's why you should be replaced with the Word of God. Why else should you memorize verses? Why do we give these verses to you? You've got to memorize them that way when the imagination pops up. Because this is, you try, okay, for example, you try thinking about smoking that marijuana when you quote a verse inside your mind where Jesus says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are ye able. Quote a verse. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men at the judgment seat of Christ. You try sinning after that, huh? You try sinning after quoting that verse. Amen. See? That's why saturate your mind. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? Why? That I might not sin against thee. Sin always starts from the thought, so thus you should replace it with the word of God. That's why. What does the book of Philippians say? We're not going to turn over there. And I forgot the chapter, so I'll look it up quickly. But I think it's Philippians chapter 2 or chapter 3. But in that chapter, it says, What's finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, pure, just, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So if wrong thoughts are filling up in your mind, replace it with the right kinds of thoughts. Amen. So you got the Word of God to replace the imagination. Also think about pure thoughts. Think about Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you. And then you try sinning after that. Picture Jesus Christ right in front of your face, all right? If you, have, if you see that bottle right in front of your face, picture the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ right in front of that. And you try drinking after that. Picture the face of the Lord Jesus Christ on that screen before you look at the face of something else on that screen. See? Now you try sinning after that. I just ruined your convenient day right after you finish Sunday church. Oh, I want to go home and do my sin because I confessed and repented on the altar. Now Pastor Kim put something in my mind where I can't feel comfortable anymore to do the sin. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3, it is true. When you keep thinking, it affects your actions. You know, there are, you got to realize this. This is an interesting study that I learned concerning people, so everyone is of age over here, but there are people who struggle with pornography. And what psychologists and scientists discovered is that it affects your brain where it becomes a drug addiction. Because you put so much things in your head that now it affects everything about you in your action. But that's the same thing with homosexuality, which is why they found a scientific excuse. There's some part of the gland in the brain that's smaller or some bigger or something like that. But, you know, how do you, they not know that it became like that because of the stuff that they kept thinking in their mind? See, every drug addiction, all kinds of addiction, it happens right here. That's why you can't help but do it, see? But see, that's a, the reverse is true. If you start thinking and putting the right kind of thoughts into your head and you keep practicing that, keep practicing that, it's going to switch the... It's going to switch the mechanics of your brain into naturally thinking and doing what's pure. Outward, if you constantly practice it, it changes how you think. Oh, where does it say that? Well, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, Commit thy works unto the Lord. See that? Constantly working, doing that. And thy what? Thought shall be what? Established. That's right. Amen. There's another verse that, I mean, there are tons of verses. Oh, help me, help me. You haven't been reading your Bible. There are tons of verses. Galatians 5, 16, have you ever read that? You don't have to turn there. I'll read it quickly. It says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. Why? So that ye and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, if you constantly practice spiritual things, you're not going to do uh, that fleshy, that wicked thing. Now, what do you do when you keep falling into sin over and over again, and then you get depressed and you get discouraged? What are you going to do about it, right? Well, don't worry about it, because what you got to claim is the promise of 1 John 1, 7 and 9. And I can't stress this enough. There are people out there, there are so many people out there who get discouraged and want to quit. You know what? Let me tell you something. Don't quit. Never quit confessing. Amen. Never quit confessing. Never quit it. I know it's the thousandth time, 
But what you got to do is that you can't get victory in one day. Sometimes people have conquered it for years and they go back to the bottle again. They go back to the addiction again. Or they go back to the sexual thing again. What you've got to do is that you can't get discouraged and quit confessing. If you commit the sin the thousandth time, confess it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Repent, get convicted, be sorry again, be determined the thousandth time again. I'm not going to do it. And then guess what? If you mess up again, keep doing it again. The reason why is if you quit confessing, it's a guarantee you will end up with that sin. But if you don't quit confessing, you always bring up hope that you can conquer that sin. So never quit. This has been extremely helpful in my life because you'd be surprised how much God will be merciful and gracious to you and still use you even if you sin again as long as you keep trying. So I can't stress that enough. A lot of people, they just don't follow that. And because they don't follow that, that's why they get easily discouraged. That's why they mess up their lives in sin because they quit and they've given up. Never quit. Never give up, bless God. You better keep pressing on for the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are very important verses to keep in mind because they will be extremely helpful in your life on how to conquer certain sins and certain addictions. I need help, Pastor. You got help. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. I want to commit suicide. I want, I want to give up life. This is very important for you. All right? Amen. If you quit, then it's game over then for you.